Hello students. Welcome to today's digital class. This is Grace Joshua, Assistant Professor, Department of English, Teachers Academy Degree College, Hanur Main Road, Bangalore. Today, we are going to learn a simple grammar topic on analyzing the structure of sentences in terms of S, V, O, A, C. For second semester BA optional English students, which includes compulsory questions in section E for four marks. It can also be useful for other students who are seeking to learn the structure of sentences. To begin, I would like to remind you all the simple definitions we need to know for the topic. Firstly, word, a single distinct meaningful element of speech or writing used with others to form a sentence. For example, country, which is a noun, sing, it's a verb, etc. Phrase, a small group of words standing together as a conceptual unit, forming a part of a clause. Example, in the book, clause, a unit of grammatical organization below the sentence in rank and it consists of a subject and predicate. When the sun shone, he stood under the shadow. Now look at that. There are two parts in the subject. The subject of the first clause is the sun and the verb is shone. The subject of the second clause is he and the verb is stood. Finally, Sentence, a set of words that is complete in itself, typically containing a subject and predicate, conveying a statement, a question, exclamation or command and consisting of a main clause and sometimes one or more subordinate clauses. A simple sentence, the teacher taught a lesson on sentences. As we understand, a sentence is divided into two parts, subject and predicate. Now, subject denotes the person or thing about which something is said. And we know that predicate is what is said about the person or thing denoted by the subject. For example, monkey's chatter. Monkey is the subject, chatter is the predicate. My sister presented me a guitar. My sister is a subject. Presented me a guitar is a predicate. And so on. Students, if you have observed the above examples, each of the words have been highlighted in a particular color. The subject and predicate have one word or more, but there is some essential word which is called as a subject and which is a noun and predicate as a verb. When the subject of a sentence has several words, there's always one word which is important called as subject word or simply subject. For example, look at the examples given here below. The village life suited him in all respects. The first part of a sentence is the subject, the village life. In this particular example, out of all those words, village is that simple word or the specific word which is called as a subject word. And so also, look at the second example, birds of the same feather. Out of all those words, birds is simply the subject or rather the subject word. And you can also look at the other examples given below. So we understand at the end of the session, we are going to clearly understand the following terms. The terms are the subject, the verb, denoted by V, object, O, 
complement C and adverbial A. Now moving further, I would like to draw your attention to understand more about the subject. Now just now we understood what is a subject word. In complete subject, the subject word is also qualified by an adjective or it's called as an adjective equivalent named as an attribute. The first part of the sentence here, the streets of my city is the subject. Are beautiful is the predicate. But trying to analyze the first part of the sentence, streets is the subject word, but the of my city is the attribute. And so also, R.K. Narayan, the writer. R.K. Narayan is the subject word. The writer is the attribute. I hope you understood the concept. I want you to closely heed to the second part, that is the predicate. In predicate, the predicate word is the verb. It is qualified by an adverb or adverb equivalent called as the adverbial qualification. It can be a single word, a phrase, or a clause. It answers the questions like where, when, why, how, how often, and so on. Consider the first example given below. The little child is in the cradle. So the subject word is the child, the attribute is the little, the verb of course is is, and what is that verbial qualification? In the cradle. So let me put, this, put it this way. The little child is where? So it answers the question to the verb where in the cradle. Look at the second example. The football match was played when? Last night. Doctors around the world work how or how often, how much, round the clock. So it's very simple. Adverbial qualification simply answers a question on the verb with the question words like where, when, why and so on. To understand more about the adverbials, we, we, know, we know that adverbials can be more than one in a sentence and they need not be always in the final position. As the example below, we work on the computer for five hours daily. But look at the extra word I have added there, usually, usually. So that takes the second position in the sentence. And however, the adverbials are there also in the final position. So I need to make you understand that adverbials need not be always in the final position. And when more than one adverbial is used in a sentence, it usually follows a pattern. The pattern is manner, place, and time. He came quickly to my house an hour ago. Look at this pattern of adverbials given here below. Quickly, adverb of manner, to my house, adverbial of place, an hour ago, adverbial of time. So this is the common pattern we come across in the position of the adverbials. To understand one of the components called the complement, if you remember, we talked about the S, V, O, A, C, complement. We need to understand two important words, that is transitive and intransitive verbs. What are these? An intransitive verb is a verb that does not take a direct object. It means... There's no word in the sentence that tells who 
or what received the action of the verb. It's simply like this. The baby looks. So it can be a word or a phrase where there's no answer further and there's no object further. On the other hand, a transitive verb is that which accepts one or more objects. So the object can be a noun, a pronoun, a gerund or clauses. And these verbs can be classified by the number of objects they require. For example, the Indian cricket team played for us a test match. Now look at that verb there, played. It's a transitive verb, which is accepting one or more objects. What is the object? For us. For us is the pronoun. A test match is another word, another object, which is a noun. Here are some of the verbs used in the intransitive as we discussed in the first part. The verbs are agree, appear, arrive, look, rise, sit, etc. And how do we recognize an intransitive verb? It's very simple. Firstly, it's an action verb expressing a doable activity like arrive, sneeze, sit. Secondly, it will not have a direct object receiving the action. Examples again, the audience laughed, the, the kid smiled, the event occurred, etc. So how, what do we conclude here? So intransitive verb is just that it has a subject and a verb, whereas the transitive verb has a subject, verb, along with the object. Moving further to understand this verb in the predicative as an intransitive verb, here is what we understand about the complement. In some cases, the verb in the predicate is an intransitive verb and does not make complete sense. For example, the sky grew. Sky grew how? What? It requires a noun or a pronoun or an adjective or an adverb or a participle or an infinitive or a group of words to make some sense. And that is what we term it as a complement. The complement of an intransitive verb serves to describe the subject. Therefore, it's called as a subjective complement. For example, the face grew pale. Face was pale. This house looks mine. House, mine. And sometimes the verb in the predicate is a transitive verb and requires an object to complete the sentence. For example, cats catch mice. The object can be a noun or a pronoun, adjective, gerund, infinitive, group of words which function as a noun. Now look at the examples given below. All good people consider the poor. Now please understand that the verb consider is taking an object, the poor, as a noun. In the second example, walks with her. It's taking an object with her, which is a pronoun and so on. So therefore, we understand that a transitive verb usually requires an object to complete the sentence. Sometimes the verb in the predicate is a transitive verb and takes two objects, a direct object and an indirect object. My friend sent me a greeting. Now, me a greeting. So greeting is the direct object. Me, the pronoun, is an indirect object. And so we clearly understand that the, the, the pattern we understand here is S-V-O-O, -O, a direct object and an indirect object. Moving further, we understand here 
that the transitive verbs require a complement in addition to the object. Now, what's the pattern we, we understand here or we look here? The pattern is subject, verb, object, complement. And this object which is taken along with the object, call, we call it as an objective complement. For example, the police found them corrupt. Both parents worked for him well. So the complement is about something linking to the object, which completes the sentence. I hope we understood how to identify and analyze SVOAC. Kindly note, I've given examples based on the previous question papers, which can help you a lot and to understand the pattern of SVOAC analyzing. I hope we had a, a great learning. Thank you.